Guys, it is hot outside. I mean, it is literally burning up all throughout the country. I mean, we're literally in the middle of a heat wave, guys, in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic, no less. Uh, I'm actually sitting outside. This is uh, in the terrace of my building. Uh, I wanted some greenery for a change. <laughs> anyway, we are talking about heat stroke. Oh, and by the way, I have my mask. I'm just not near anybody, so I'm not wearing it right now. Uh, but the breeze feels really good to me, thank goodness. But it is hot outside. Guys, do you know the difference between heat stroke and heat exhaustion? Yeah, there's subtle differences, but it's super important. By the way, heat stroke can actually be deadly. Did you know that? Yeah, it's actually a life-threatening emergency. Heat stroke is when you get so hot that in addition to other symptoms, which I'll go through in a minute, you actually have what we call mental status changes. That means people uh, may have seizures. They may feel dizzy or confused or loopy or dopey, meaning they're not thinking right. And if that should happen to anyone you know in the midst of heat or just in general, you need to call 911. But let me back up and give you some of the symptoms of heat stroke because during this heat wave that we're experiencing, um, we have to remember that heat related illnesses cause so many deaths okay so first of all first of all with heat stroke temperature the body temperature goes up to like 106 degrees yeah 106 that's insane right uh, it is the body also tends to get red and hot and doesn't tend to sweat well which is a problem because we know that sweating helps release heat it helps make us cool so if you're not sweating you're not releasing that heat but also people with heat stroke can get fatigued tired they can have headaches they can have a, a fast pulse they can have um, nausea and vomiting and things of that nature what do you do if you think somebody has heat stroke, um, you call 911. You get them to a cool place while you're waiting for emergency officials to come. You have got to call 911 and make sure they seek medical care. Now, heat exhaustion is like the lesser form, right? So it's not as severe as heat stroke. It may not be as life-threatening, but it's still very, very serious. Usually with heat exhaustion, you start to sweat a lot. And that's one of the differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Heat exhaustion, you sweat profusely, skin may be pale, you may be having a rapid heart rate, but you can still get the nausea, vomiting, and all that kind of stuff. But you don't typically have what we call mental status changes. That's the dizziness and stuff like that that we get with heat stroke. Still with heat exhaustion, you gotta move people to a cool area, get them cooled down, and seek medical care if you need it. And uh, also, don't forget heat cramps. That's when you're usually exercising in the heat um, and often sweating a lot at the time too and that's when you start cramping up whether it's your abdomen and your arms your legs um, what you need to do is stop the exercise get into a cool place replenish those fluids monitor yourself see if you need medical care and let's not forget heat rash that usually happens in like the young kids like the little ones um, that's where they sweat a lot and the skin gets irritated from all the sweat um, you know what can happen is you get this rash that looks like little blisters or pimples um, so some of the same things apply you want to keep the child cool so remember that young people, the little ones, and older people are most at risk for heat-related illness. We've got to keep this in mind. Also, other people who are at high risk are people who are obese, people who are on certain prescription medications, those with mental illness, um, also people with heart disease and other chronic diseases. Um, I would also say people who are, are drinking alcohol, right? So alcohol can put you at particular risk for heat-related illness. By the way, that we don't want to cool off with alcohol. Um, and alcoholic drinks when we're hot, not a good thing. Those with poor circulation can also uh, be prone to heat-related illness. Guys, so what can you do? You're asking, I know you're saying. So what do I do uh, to protect myself and my family against heat-related illness? Well, the first thing is to find some air conditioning. Yeah, and in fact, I'm getting ready to go inside very soon because I'm sweltering out here. Um, so get some air conditioning. Air conditioning is one of the most protective things you can do. So get inside. Also look after your elders. And I know that we can't go to visit people with coronavirus, but make sure that you're calling people Make sure they have proper air conditioning and things like that. Uh, if you have to go outside, avoid the hottest times of day. Wear light uh, clothing that's white, that reflects uh, light, that doesn't absorb it. Make sure that it's loose fitting, that you're wearing sunscreen, um, that you're drinking plenty of water and, and things of that nature. Let's see, what else can you do? To, oh, wear a hat, um, a wide brim hat to kind of keep you cool. Um, all of these things are going to be super important, but guys, air conditioning is where it's at. Please stay cool. Even though we're in a pandemic, we got to remember all oh, these other things that are happening in the world and right now it's called a heat wave so uh, stay cool I'm Dr. Jen Cottle uh, don't forget to share this video with others that you think might benefit from it also don't forget to like and follow my page because I do daily health videos and if you're interested in sending stars I answer your questions first guys I'm Dr. Jen Cottle I will see you soon